Good evening. We had a very good first day of camp. Many of you are a little bit weary from long travel, so I've decided to do something simple and basic, preparing for the heavier health lectures Monday night and later on next week. So tonight we're going to look at the digestive system and since nutrition is so important, just go through what you ought to know and highlight some important points here about the digestive tract and protecting it, preparing the way for our other health lectures on how to eat to protect against stroke and heart attack and clots and cancer and so on. So welcome and thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a wonderful first day of camp meeting. Thank you for all of the blessings, the spiritual food, the physical food, the fellowship. Now, as we come to our last lecture, this health PowerPoint on the, the digestive system, bless us, guide us, direct us, and enable us to so respect and care for our bodies as to give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Or as you know, digestion includes taking in the food that is called ingestion. Everybody can see? Movement. The food has to be moved all the way down. Mechanical and chemical digestion. Mechanical means the chewing, biting and chewing in the mouth and mixing, and then, of course, in the stomach, further mixing, and then chemical digestion, enzymes which have to break down complex food stuff to simple stuff. Protein to amino acids, starches to glucose, complex fats to free fatty acids. Then the food must be absorbed, and then there is elimination. And when we talk about mechanical digestion, we are talking about chewing, and we know that we should take time to chew properly. Our teeth are made with the ability to chew, tear, grind, mash, and mix, and the tongue plays an important role there, mixing the food with saliva, which begins a process of digestion with salivary amylase. Chemical digestion, enzymes, as I just mentioned, to break down complex stuff like carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. So this is a picture of the gastrointestinal tract, the, the tube there you see in green, is the esophagus or swallow pipe. The esophagus is about 10 to 11 inches long. Uh, it doesn't usually give trouble, but there are two common disorders you should be aware of. If acid from the stomach gets back up into the esophagus, it burns it. That is called acid reflux or heartburn. It has nothing to do with the heart. Heartburn is an ancient term. And the acid coming back here to burn the esophagus can predispose the esophagus to cancer. Other disorders of the esophagus are that squamous cell carcinoma, cancer of the esophagus, can be caused by cigarette smoking. And listen carefully, drinking or eating food that is too hot. So people like drinking very hot tea, dangerous. But the prophecy says we should avoid extreme heat or extreme cold going down. I see people take soup straight from the saucepan. It's boiling and they say, don't drink it comfortable. But not comfortable because it has to be burning the esophagus. That should not be done. As this tube here, we have to protect. And of course, the most common symptom arising from the esophagus or swallow pipe is when a person develops difficulty swallowing over the age of 50. It is cancer of the esophagus until proven otherwise, and there is usually no other proof. In other words, uh, avoiding very hot liquids and foods, avoiding tobacco, avoiding alcohol, not eating and lying down late at night with the food regurgitating back into the stomach, we have to protect the esophagus or the swallow pipe. I've seen people with cancer of the esophagus, and it isn't an easy disease. There's nothing that can be done. 
The surgeons simply try to take a piece of the colon and bypass the block. It is a terrible malady, but we can protect that swallow pipe by curing it. Then, it, it, then there's the stomach. We're going to come back in a minute. Then the small intestine, the large bowel, and you see the accessory organs, the liver, the gallbladder underneath there, and just behind the stomach, the pancreas. In these organs here, we now understand that cancer of the colon and rectum are both on the increase and are epidemic worldwide. We'll talk a little bit about them a little later on. Cancer of the stomach is on the decline in big countries, and they relate that to uh, increased intake of vitamin C and more vegetables. Cancer of the mouth increases with alcohol, tobacco, and hot foods. The other day there was a lady in St. Peter who was uh, nearly 85 and in good health. And the doctor told her she should be living to 100. She comes from a good family. But she developed cancer of the tongue. Tongue. And the doctor said, you don't, told her, you don't smoke. You eat a healthy diet. You come from a good family gene. What happened here? She, she said, I have to admit, I love drinking my tea boiling hot. Don't do it. So the mouth, the teeth mechanically break down food into small pieces. The tongue mixes the food with saliva. And as we're told in medicine, as we're told in the spirit of prophecy, chewing properly and taking time to chew is important. As a matter of fact, a recent trial showed that people who chew long tend to live longer. And God has made us so marvelously that, you know, the, the airway and the swallow pipe share a common opening at the top. And watch infinite wisdom. You see the epiglottis here closes off the airway so that when you swallow, food goes down the swallow pipe and not into your trachea. And when there are problems there like in strokes and other disorders and food gets back into your uh, trachea, that means you're swallowing food into your lungs, that's trouble. So we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And by the way, the research is showing that we should keep our teeth and gums in good order because disease of the gums, periodontal disease, and plaque in between the teeth increase bacterial toxins in the blood, create inflammation, and increase the risk for stroke and heart attack. Imagine that. Dental hygiene. So the esophagus, we mentioned already. There it is. 10 to 11 inches long. Functions include it secretes mucus, it moves the food from the throat to the stomach using a muscle movement called peristalsis. And if acid from the stomach gets back into the esophagus, that is called heartburn or acid reflux. Gastro, stomach, esophageal reflux. It is a common disorder and it is precipitated by eating late and lying down, eating hurriedly, using a dangerous grease, and also obesity. Being overweight predisposes to acid reflux. Stress also aggravates it. The stomach, very important organ. There it is in the red. Uh, it is a J-shaped muscular bag that stores the food you eat, breaks it down into tiny pieces, mixes and churns. Uh, the major digestion that begins in the stomach is protein digestion by acid, hydrochloric acid, and pepsin, breaking the big proteins down to smaller peptides. So the stomach mixes the food with the digestive juices, as we just said. Acid in the stomach kills bacteria. And food found in the stomach is called chyme. Now, this bacteria here we're talking about uh, let's just mention this a minute.
there's a particular germ that can live in the stomach called Helicobacter pylori. And we didn't know about it for a long time. And then an Australian pathologist nearly killed himself to convince the medical world that it exists. Uh, what it does is that it causes, it either causes the stomach lining to produce too much acid, causing peptic ulcer, or it destroys the stomach lining, causing atrophic, atrophy means destroyed, gastritis, which predisposes to cancer. So Helicobacter pylori is very common. A lot of people have it. And it loves junk food. That is why it is so common in people who eat unhealthily. All the junk food that people like to eat, and a lot of animal products, it thrives on it. If you move to a vegetable diet, eating lots of cruciferous vegetables, broccoli and green stuff, it doesn't like it. And it doesn't thrive. But this Helicobacter pylori is responsible for a lot of stomach ailments. Eating a lot of vegetables and salads and cutting out animal products and sugar, Helicobacter pylori cannot thrive in the stomach. And of course, vitamin C, it does not like either. The small intestine, there in the center, roughly seven meters long, seven meters, that's how many feet? Seven trees are 21, approximately 21 feet. Uh, the lining of the intestine walls has finger-like projections called villi to increase the surface area, and the villi are covered in microvilli, which further increases the surface area for absorption. So there it is. And if you were to stretch out the lining of the small intestine, it would have a surface area larger than an uh, international size football field. So fearfully we are made because of the microvilli increasing the absorptive surface area. So absorption is a very effective process. Digestion and absorption are very efficient having been devised by infinite wisdom. So the small intestine, uh, most of the digestion takes place there, enzymes from the pancreas, amylase to digest starch, proteases to digest protein, lipase to digest fat. Most of the digestion will take place in the small intestine, and the digested food will pass the digested food will pass into the bloodstream through the, the villi and microvilli. So the small intestine will absorb most of your water, all of your vitamins, minerals, uh, the carbohydrates broken down to glucose, proteins to amino acids, and fats to free fatty acids are absorbed in the small intestine very efficiently. The small intestine is alkaline, and there is scarcely any cancer problem in the small intestine because it is alkaline and uh, you tend to get more cancer in the large bubble which tends to be acid. The large bubble, we look at it in greater detail in a minute, about five feet long, accepts what the small intestines don't absorb which would be fiber the rectum, short-term storage, which holds feces before it is expelled. And functions of the large intestine, bacterial digestion. Now, this is very important. Your large bubble contains bacteria which are friendly and called the microbiome, or also called the uh, healthy bacterial flora. Now, we now understand that you must have a lot of healthy bacteria in your colon for good health. We didn't know this before. We now understand that about 70% of your immune system resides in the gut. And that healthy bacteria positively impacts impact on that uh, immune system from head to toe. And the best way to keep the bacteria in the gut healthy 
is not to just go and buy a probiotic and take it, but to eat wholesome fiber, especially root fiber. So carrots and beets and turnips and radishes, those roots, okay, with their fiber. You can use them raw in a smoothie. You can cook them. But the fiber from those roots, green leafy vegetables, certain nuts, especially walnuts and almonds, grains and seeds, cassava, all the fiber-rich ground provisions and green leafy vegetables are bacteria-friendly. And the bacteria, we can't digest fiber, but the bacteria in the colon can break down fiber. And in breaking down fiber, a number of things happen. The healthy bacteria help to keep out bad bacteria, and the healthy bacteria help to protect the colon against cancer. And eating a high-fiber diet, look at it here. Eating a high-fiber diet, this is the small intestine comes in here at the cecum. This is the appendix there, the cecum. This is the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, and the rectum. And most cancers occur in the descending, the sigmoid, and the rectum. So colorectal cancer is very common. It has to do with not eating enough fiber. Most people in this generation eat a lot of refined, processed carbohydrates, pasta and white flour, and not enough fiber. Your colon needs fiber to clean itself, and also when there's a lot of fiber, it can get the fecal matter pushed along without generating too much pressure, which cuts the blood supply. Another thing we understand now, we see a lot of our colorectal cancer, this epidemic, uh, and I will mention this when we come to nutrition on Monday night, God willing. Eating a lot of fried meat and barbecued meat and grilled meat, high temperature animal flesh preparation markedly increases the risk of colorectal cancer. I've known examples of people with rectal cancer, and when I asked them about their past, and they're young people, young people. One girl who died almost 15 years ago when she was 39, and a beautiful girl. Her father is still living, he's nearly 90. And she said, and he said, she said, she couldn't resist flesh, especially animal fat, and would eat fried and eat it. And he said, he warned her over and over again. So she gone at 39, he's 90. And the animal fat, especially fried and barbecued and prepared at high temperatures, which is what the world loves, that animal fat at high temperature preparation produces polyaromatic heterocyclic amines, which definitely irritate this area, causing cancer of the sigmoid and rectum. And of course, you should know that cancer in this area may be silent. That is why people over the age of 50 are recommended to get a colonoscopy at least every 10 years, or if you have a family history earlier, but and there, are, there are other tests to detect blood in the stool because blood in the stool, visible or invisible, is an early sign or any change in bowel pattern. Your bowel is accustomed to moving a particular way. All of a sudden, there is increasing difficulty and there is no obvious reason or it comes out like, like goat stool, narrow or pencil. Uh, that may represent a mass in there obstructing the colon. And colorectal cancer, if caught early, you have a reasonable chance, but the best thing is to prevent. Eat more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and fiber. All the ground provisions. And move away from animal products and dangerous food preparation. And protect the colon. Of course, when we come to nutrition, we mentioned that carrots with carotene, tomato products with lycopene, they are very protective of the lining of the colon along with vitamin C and a high fiber diet. You know, nowadays they tell us to aim to get in 30 grams of fiber a day. And most people don't reach that because we eat too much uh, refined processed stuff. A researcher said that 120 years ago, approximately, 
our great, 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 great grandparents, our ancestors, easily ate 100 grams of fiber a day because nothing was processed. They just picked their berries, ate their cassava, everything was natural. But we move away from nature and gone into the era of processing. And although there's healthy processing, most processing is taking the fiber out and leaving just the starch behind. And it is the fiber that is so protective of the colon. Eat more fiber, whole grains, ground provisions, green leafy vegetables, fruits, and especially the roots, cassava, sweet potato, beets, carrots, turnips, radishes, not only contain fiber, but wonderful antioxidants to protect. So we'll finish because I know some of the folk had a long trip today and are getting weary, so we'll finish in a couple of minutes. The accessory organs are not a part of the path of food travel, but play a critical role. For example, these organs are called the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. These are called the accessory organs of digestion. Here is the gallbladder, which stores the bile that is produced by the liver. The bile contains bile salts, which are necessary. They act as, act as a detergent. Bile salts are necessary for fat to be digested. And when people use too much fat, especially fat that is dangerous, fat that is heated at a high temperature, trans fat and animal fat, the gallbladder can develop stones. And women who are overweight and use, use a lot of fried fatty stuff are more susceptible to stones in the gallbladder called gallstones than men. The pancreas produces insulin and glucagon. Those two hormones deal with the, uh, blood sugar control. But the pancreas via the pancreatic that produces digestive enzymes for the digestion of food. The pancreas is the most important digestive organ in that it produces all the enzymes necessary to break down carbohydrates, fat, and protein. And the liver... See the liver there? The liver is one of the largest organs in the body, about 1,500 grams, 1 1.5 kilogram. It uh, directly affects digestion by producing the bile, and the bile contains bile salts that help fat to be digested. The liver is a major organ of removing toxins from your body. Uh, the food we eat, the water we drink, things we take in, people use a lot of medications, the liver has to detoxify all that. Otherwise, it would kill you. So God has made us in such a way that after we eat the food and the food is digested, it is absorbed into the portal vein that takes it straight to the liver, where the liver begins to deal with detoxifying dangerous stuff before it reaches the systemic circulation. And things that are injur injurious to the liver... Drugs, even the drugs that people have to take to control certain disorders. Let me give you an example. You know acid reflux and peptic ulcer? Well, in medicine, they are treated with drugs called proton pump inhibitors or metprazole, for example, and others. And recently, it has been, something has been observed. People who use these drugs over a long period of time, they've noticed something. Recently in America and in the United Kingdom, the incidence of liver cancer has been going up. And they've shown a direct link between the drugs used to treat acid diseases, like omeprazole and alacid and those, those kinds of things, and cancer of the liver. So prevention and keeping away from uh, medications as much as we can, not that they may not be necessary in certain circumstances, is the best way to go prevention. Alcohol is particularly dangerous to the liver. Uh, things that help the liver, a simple molecule called N-acetylcysteine, we'll talk more about that during the week. 
NAC protects the lungs and liver. It's a natural molecule that helps the liver make more of a substance called glutathione. It helps to prevent liver damage. A, a very good herb for the liver is milk thistle. Milk thistle protects the liver as well as protects the lung, protects the prostate, and helps prevent cancer. So NAC, N-acetylcysteine, and milk thistle extract, good for the liver. Dandelion, also good for the liver. Golden seal, also good for the liver. Eating an abundance of green vegetables, avoiding alcohol, tobacco, and drugs that will harm the liver. And a lot of drugs will harm the liver because the liver has to deal with them first. So here's the liver. It is, the liver carries out so many important functions. The liver makes all the proteins in the blood except the immune globulins. So the liver, the liver makes albumin and all of the globulins. The liver makes the clotting factors. Without that, your blood wouldn't clot. You would just bleed to death. The liver detoxifies drugs and all chemicals that come in. The liver stores glycogen so that when you fast, you have a storage there. And the liver... Above all, removes ammonia, which is formed from the amino group of amino acids from protein. So protein breakdown gives rise to ammonia, and the liver takes that ammonia and converts it to urea, and then the urea comes out in the urine. If the liver can't convert ammonia from the amino groups of amino acids from protein into urea, you will get uh, liver, that's liver failure and that's death. So the liver is a very important organ. You can't live without it. And yet you can live with this one if. So when men drink rum and get cirrhosis, they've mashed up all eight ifs of the liver. Gallbladder. There you see it. Stores bile from the liver, releases it into the small intestine. We mentioned that already. Fatty diets can cause gallstones and cancer of the gallbladder. Now, cancer of the gallbladder and cancer of the bile ducts is as dread as pancreatic cancer. And again, it's related to high fat, fried, greasy, meaty foods. Hence, hence we see the value of a natural vegetable diet, your raw salads, your ground provisions, your whole grains, high fiber and keeping away from the dangerous fats. The pancreas. Very important organ, there it is, behind the stomach. Produces digestive enzymes to digest fats, carbohydrates, and protein. Regulates the blood sugar by producing insulin and glucagon and other hormones as well. It's a fantastic organ. Uh, just a few things about the pancreas before we close. The common disorders of the pancreas are acute pancreatitis, usually triggered by alcohol or a gallstone, chronic pancreatitis related to alcohol, and cancer of the pancreas related to cigarette smoking and dangerous high-fat diets. So, you know, as Adventists, God has really been good in giving us a health message. We've been telling the world ever since, no tobacco, no alcohol, and avoid the animal fats. And avoid high temperature food preparation. Eat as close to nature as possible. Natural, simple, high fiber. And that indeed protects all of the digestive organs. Uh, because cancer of the pancreas is really virtually a death sentence. Okay, we wrap it up. Some fun facts. How long are your intestines? At least 25 feet in an adult. Be glad you are not a full-grown horse. Their coiled-up intestines are 89 feet long. So all of that surface area is to efficiently digest and absorb food. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, Brother Prince. Brother Prince has arrived. Brother Prince has arrived. He did not miss his flight. Welcome, Brother and Sister Prince. And who, who has that been? 
Sister Lucille, welcome. God bless. But Prince, we will deal with you and Brother Noel later on. All right. Food can dry up and hang out in the large intestine for up to two days. You don't want that. You want to drink enough water and eat enough fiber so you have a quick transit time through and things don't remain there so that any irritation can build up and cause inflammation or cancer. More water, more fiber, eating naturally helps to clean the bubble. People go and take all sorts of bubble cleanses and so on. Our own diet should be our own colon cleanse if we eat natural, high-fiber foods. In your lifetime, your digestive system may handle about 50 tons. Wow. Fearfully and wonderfully made. And for people who overeat, that'd be about 100 tons. Oh, I know it's quiz time. So, simple quiz. I should have given not a piece of paper, but you can answer now. Uh, the first green is? The first red? The pink? The brown? The purple? The second green? The second green, gallbladder, and the yellow, the pancreas. So everybody passed? How did you do? Green esophagus, red stomach, pink small intestine, brown large intestine, purple the liver, green gallbladder, yellow pancreas, and all of these organs are protected. Great job, everybody passed. All of these organs are protected by eating natural, high-fiber foods, vegetarian, vegan lifestyle, and even as vegetarians and vegans, avoiding high-temperature food preparation and eating naturally and simply. Whatever you can eat raw, make sure it is clean and eat it raw, your salads, your fruits, and so on. And remember the value of roots. Usually on mornings, I do a, a brew with purple cabbage, a carrot, a beet, some walnuts, either spinach or watercress, well, or, or, and I put in a noni leaf. You know, when we go walking on mornings, we collect breakfast as we walk. A noni leaf, a uh, noni is uh, good stuff, and blend it, no sugar. I put in some blueberries and uh, get an early morning high fiber green, all raw, all natural. Because these natural vegetable foods in their natural raw form help the bacteria, the healthy bacteria to protect the colon and the bubble. All right, uh, you've had a long day, so I'm going to close right now and allow just two minutes for any questions because this is introductory. Monday night, we're going to go deeper and later on in the week. So thank you. Any quick questions? Well, I have to let the trainees sleep because they, they haven't only two hours sleep in the last 24 hours. Okay. Well, thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the first day of camp, our lectures, our discussions, as we began to look at Christianity and civil government, the basic principles, and our first basic elementary health lecture on the digestive tract. As we go deeper in every area as camp proceeds, bless us, keep us abiding in Christ, strengthen our faith. We thank you for the, those who have visited, bless them all. As we approach final events, have mercy upon us and prepare us intellectually and experientially with the righteousness of Christ and the truth of your word for what is coming. Give us all now a good night's rest. Those who are traveling, take them home to, in peace and safety. 
and bring us back tomorrow morning for day number two. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Good night. Have a good early sleep. See you tomorrow morning early. God bless you. Trinity's got a good rest. Praise the Lord.